Hello, my name is Brigitte Mongeon, and I would like to introduce to you a challenge, a 30-minute sketch in Mudbox. Now, this is a wonderful practice to get into, whether you're just beginning with Mudbox or you've been a seasoned sculptor. Set the timer and begin sculpting. Remember, you only have 30 minutes. I also do these down in my traditional studio. It helps to free me up, gets me more involved with gesture and emotion. Sometimes when you're working with the tools and you're trying to do such detail and taking such time with a piece, it, you become stiff. And if you could do a 30 minute sketch each morning before you begin or each night when you're done to help to free up the juices, the creative juices. I've tried to videotape this showing a lot of my tools because I think it's important that you are able to see the tool set for those people who are beginners. Each sculptor has their own set of favorite tools and you may find that you approach this in a very different way from the way that I have. You're going to notice that I use the freeze tool quite a bit and the invert freeze as well and uh, also the bulge tool, and the grab tool, and, and the foamy tool. Now when using the freeze tool, of course you can see how that is done with the mouth, making it much easier and quicker to do the mouth and the teeth and the lips. But often I will use the freeze tool, and then utilizing the bulge tool in the inverse bulge tool or um, in, invert my my freeze and then build up on the adjoining layers next to it uh, also pulling down and grabbing eyelids or pulling up eyelids on a fr frozen eye when using the grab tool especially over a frozen area don't forget to turn the sculpture you have a variety of ways that you can pull and push the sculpture. One thing you can't see is that I am using the shift key to smooth often. Now realizing that when you're doing these quick sketches you're not going to be able to get everything just perfect and most likely the back of the head will suffer you won't be able to get the pro appropriate proportions but that's not the point of doing this. If you're looking for inspiration just Google silly face or mad child or funny old man and see what comes up on the internet. I like to pick things that have a lot of emotion and a lot of expression so that I can try to capture that. And of course having an open mouth and doing a 30 minute sketch provided a little bit more of a challenge. When you're finding your photographic reference to use on the internet, don't feel too tied with it. If it doesn't look exactly like your photograph, that's not why we were picking the photograph to work with. It was just something to inspire you, to give you s some direction. And also, you know, you're going to notice that when I started to do this sculpture, it in the Digital Sculpting with Mudbox, Essential Tools and Technique for Artists, we talk about the Facial Action Coding System. This was a system that was created by psychologist Paul Ekman. And animators are beginning to utilize this Facial Action Coding System to help them understand, as well as they're also using it in robotics, and we've put some information about this on the digitalsculpting.net website. But it's a very interesting thing to get to know and help you to understand the emotion of the face. Don't be surprised when you get to the intensity of the emotion that you find that you're holding that emotion in your own face as you sculpt. Another suggestion is to have a mirror near your computer where can you can squinch up your own face and hold your own emotion. There is a forum at digitalsculpting.net where you can add your own 30-minute sketches. We invite you to come and share. Can't wait to see what you've come up with. While you're at digitalsculpting.net, give a listen to the podcasts. They're on a variety of different topics. The point in the sketches is to have fun. Be loose. You'll never know what you come up with. 
we invite you to join us at digitalsculpting.net where you can share your own.